Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're going to talk about specifically what you should be prepping for right now. But before that, I wanted to thank everyone that helped me try to get that children's channel monetized. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I've got a second channel, and it's uh, part of my income that helps me to kind of keep bringing these videos to you guys. The more I can make income on that channel, the more time I have to share videos that I really care about here on this channel. Uh, we're not quite there yet to the goal, though, so if you are able to subscribe to the channel below uh, and you know watch some playlists to get some hours logged there we're really close to hitting our goal and i really appreciate any help that you guys have because it helps to subsidize this channel and keep this content coming to you so what should we be preparing for right now i know that there are videos all over the place where people are saying this is about to happen that's about to happen you know this other thing you know you got to watch on this you know don't elect this person because if you elect this person the whole world's going to come to the end that's been going on for decades and decades, for centuries after centuries, to be honest. And, you know, a lot of predictions never come to fruition. So does that mean we shouldn't prep at all? No, of course we should prep because things happen all the time. But how do you know specifically what's going to happen? Well, the answer to that is you kind of don't. There are things that are more likely and things that are less likely. But the types of preps that I like working on are the things that are useful, A, whether something bad happens or not. And if something bad happens, it covers all sorts of different situations. And I'm gonna walk just around kind of my outside here and kind of show you some of the things that I've done around here that are for exactly that. Things that are helpful, whether or not there's ever a disaster. And if there is a disaster, they cover you for all sorts of different emergencies. One's right here next to me, and that is fruit trees. As soon as I planted my, uh, now, as soon as I built my house, I started planting fruit trees. I've got a bunch of peach trees right along over here. They kind of continue off in this direction. I've got apple trees, I have pear trees, I have plum trees. I have all sorts of trees. And trees are really wonderful because whether there's a disaster or not, I'm gonna pop the camera off the tripod here so I can get some better shots for you. Whether there's a disaster or not, it's always nice to have wonderful, delicious fruit. And if there is a disaster, it really doesn't matter what that disaster might be. If there's a financial uh, collapse and you lose your job or your source of income, it's nice to have access to you know, food that's growing right uh, on your land around your house. Uh, if there are uh, supply chain issues, and we've seen a lot of that, if there are supply chain issues and fruit just isn't getting to market and you can't buy it, it's nice to have access to it. There are so many different reasons why it's nice to be growing your own food and having your own fruit trees is a really great way of doing that. If you grow a garden, you know that oftentimes it's kind of labor intensive, you gotta do a lot of weeding. And fruit trees are great because once you kind of get them going, they sort of do their thing, and you don't have to worry about them that much. I know that there are pests that get at them and other things, but comparing fruit tree growing to growing a garden, it's a lot less labor intensive in my uh, opinion, and I really love them. So if you have the space to throw some fruit trees in, I'd suggest you get some. You can do it this season, and one great way of doing it is to use bare root trees. Uh, you can order them. Uh, I'm going to throw a link down in the description below to a place that I've gotten all of these trees. These are all bare root trees. They come in the mail. Uh, they don't have any dirt around them. It's just a, essentially a stick with a few roots at the bottom, and you plant that, and as long as you take care of it for the first couple months, make sure it has water and good soil around it. It grows into these, and one of the great things about them is that you save a lot of money. Uh, they're about half the price of going to a garden center and getting a, uh, a fruit tree that's already kind of planted in dirt and everything. So you can get twice as many trees for the same amount of money, and like I said, as long as you keep uh, take care of them for the first couple months, they establish themselves really well, and uh, they're a great asset. Another asset that I love is my solar cooking equipment. I've got two things right here, and I actually did not throw these out here specifically for this video. I've got these out here pretty much all the time, and you can tell uh, underneath this little uh, parabolic dish that uh, the grass isn't really cut <laughs> under there. This kind of sits here all the time, and these are really great assets. Whether or not there's an emergency or there's no emergency, these are really useful items. This big parabolic solar cooker right here is really great for heating up water. It does a really great job of it. It does it really quickly. I've got independent videos that uh, are specific to this if you want to check those things out. These have pros and these have cons, but it's a really great asset. 
Uh, the reason that I've got two of them is because while the uh, parabolic solar cooker is really good at heating up water super fast, it's not really super convenient for cooking meals because it gets super hot and focuses the heat really uh, intensely on one area. This, on the other hand, this is a solar oven made by All American Sun Oven. And you can probably tell by how dirty and beat up this thing is, I get a lot of use out of it. I'm going to go onto the inside here. You know, it's a... Uh, it's not super clean, but that shows that it's really being used a lot. And I utilize this all the time. If you've got a day that's primarily sunny, all you got to do is throw meal in there and it'll cook it. I put beans in there. It's the best way, in my opinion, to cook beans. Uh, throw some lasagna together. Throw the lasagna in there. It'll cook it. Throw any kind of a meal that you throw into an oven in this thing. Point it roughly south. And by the end of the day... Uh, you know, it's warmed up. Whenever I'm reheating things, like if we've got extra pizza left over from having made pizza, throw it in the sun oven for, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes or so in, in full sun, and it's all heated up for you. And you can see there's a little uh, temperature gauge here, and at the moment, the oven's running 225. Uh, that's because, uh, you know, I didn't even close the door. It's just kind of sitting here. I like to keep it out in the sunlight uh, because it gets humidity in it when you use it, and I like to keep it nice and dry so it doesn't rust. So these are two items which are really handy during just regular times. I save a lot of energy, uh, you know, electric energy, not having to run my ovens in the house, uh, and I, I, in the summertime, I'm not heating up the inside of the house uh, and during an emergency if I didn't have access to power or, or whatnot uh, these are a great way of cooking things you know without using fire uh, and if you don't want to be putting uh, fire and smoke and smells up in the air uh, this is, these are great assets for for doing that so they've got multiple purposes whether you know it's during normal times or if there's some kind of a collapse emergency event or whatever these are really useful items just off over to the side over here, and I'm just going to, you know, elephant in the room. That's just a roof pod. <laughs> it's, that's not any kind of a prep that I have. So that's not a prep. That's just yard junk. Uh, over here, uh, I've got a garden going. And this is the first year that we're doing a garden at our new uh, homestead here. Uh, the soil is something that we're working on. Uh, if you do organic gardening, uh, your soil tends to get better year over year. This is our first year here, but it's doing pretty well nonetheless. We've got a, a row of beans right here with uh, uh, stakes next to them so that they can kind of climb up. And those are just starting over here. Uh, we've got some uh, potato plants here. You'll notice that there's also a heck of a lot of uh, weeds in the garden. Now I mentioned you've got to do a little bit more weeding when you have a garden as a, uh, compared to fruit trees. Uh, and you'll see my garden, you'll think, well, you know, gosh, it looks like you're not spending much time at all doing weeding because there's an awful lot of weeds here. Uh, I uh, focus on weeding around the actual places where there are crops. Here are some tomato plants. And I think that might be it's either broccoli or Brussels sprouts, I'm not sure. I should get better at labeling these things. Uh, you can see I, I weed around the plants, uh, but in between, uh, I like to let the, the weeds do their thing uh, because as the weeds grow, they are collecting uh, uh, you know, gas from the uh, atmosphere. They're going to decompose later, and they are going to make the soil better uh, year over year. In particular, things like clover that you see here. Uh, clover add nitrogen to the soil uh, really effectively, and uh, many of these weeds are actually edible. In fact, when I'm uh, doing my weeding, uh, I find that I, I eat quite a bit. And this is one of my favorite uh, wild edible plants. This is called lamb's quarters right here. This is essentially kind of like a wild spinach, and it's got a really, really decent taste. And I'll just shoot myself eating it. It's like a taste test thing here. Um, this is a really decent taste. In fact, compared to spinach, um, I don't know, they're, they're slightly different from each other, but I think they're both good. It's kind of crispy and has a light leafy taste. Um, some wild edibles, uh, you know, they're a little bitter or something like that. Uh, lamb's quarter is, is uh, it's really good. So when I'm uh, weeding in the garden, a lot of times I'm getting a lot of good food out of it. So a garden is a great way of, uh, you know, giving yourself in the same way of having an orchard. It's a great way of giving yourself access to food. Again, whether there's a financial emergency or whether there is, you know, a supply chain issue, or, or who knows what, it's really great to uh, have access to, you know, food that you can grow yourself. And you know, emergencies don't have to be uh, giant and worldwide or region wide. It could just be a personal emergency. Maybe you lose your job. That's not a shit hits the fan event for the whole world, but it certainly could be for you. Uh, so it's a nice uh, asset to be able to kind of grow some of these things on your own. I also grow kind of herbs on the edges. Of the uh, of the yard here, here's some uh, lemon balm here. I've uh, got a little herb garden starting up over here with some uh, this is some oregano here. Uh, but 
Uh, the last thing I want to share with you is probably kind of the coolest, uh, at least in like kind of uh, like a prepper sense, and that is a root cellar. Uh, we're coming around the corner over here, and actually I'll, I'll just pop up to the top first, so you can kind of get a sense of what the, uh, the top looks like over here. You're going to see these, these little black tubes sticking up out of the ground. Uh, and some daisies, and uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of wild growth here. And this is going to be beneficial for bees because there's a lot of uh, wildflowers starting in in this area. Oh, uh, by the way, this uh, this small tree right here, this is a tree that I put in just this season. Uh, it is uh, some type of apple tree, like a baking apple, and uh, this is just a I don't know, month month or so old. So it's not as bushy as the other ones, but you can see they uh, they start up. Uh, pretty well, pretty quickly, as long as you take care of them. Uh, but also growing out of the ground here are these these little shafts. They are uh, they're light tubes, and they go down to a root cellar that is right under underneath here. Uh, now the root cellar has multiple uses, uh, and that's one of the things I mentioned at the beginning of the video that it's it's nice to. Uh, to work on preps that could help you under a variety of different circumstances. And a root cellar is useful during normal times because it is a place that you can put extra things if you need to keep them cool. Uh, you know, if you have a lot of uh, crops from your garden, if you get a lot of pumpkins or something like that, it's nice to have a place to, to put those where they can stay cool and, uh, you know, uh, dry and safe throughout the winter. Uh, so we built this root cellar for that purpose. Uh, during the winter, this root cellar stays at uh, just a little bit above 40 degrees, which is kind of like a nice refrigerator temperature. In the summertime, uh, it's uh, more around like 60 degrees is the temperature that we have in there. One challenge uh, with the root cellar is keeping it dry. Uh, we did, uh, when we built it, we put like kind of a, a moisture uh, barrier on the outside of it, but it still gets moist, especially being cool in there. And I do run a dehumidifier in there to try to keep it from getting too moist and, and growing like mildew on the walls and everything. But let's go inside and I'll, I'll kind of show you what it's like on the inside. We've got a little hasp up here that we can lock. Uh, we don't presently really lock it because it's, you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt to unlock it all the time and we don't have a big problem with theft and there's not that much in there anyway at the moment. Uh, and got this little stick here because uh, the door was made slightly crooked and this uh, makes sure that the bottom uh, stays closed. So let's open her up. We're going to go inside and one thing about this, this space right here, let's see if the camera can kind of uh, adjust to what we're seeing in here, uh, is that it has multiple uses. And at the moment, you can see uh, in there, we've got uh, some canned foods in there, and there's also some bags of onions and bags of potatoes. There's shelving all along the sides. At the moment, it's also being used as a storage area. Uh, this stack right here is solar panels that are gonna be going up on our roof. Uh, pretty soon. And we have a couple other items in here as well. But uh, once we get all this stuff cleared out, while it's a very useful uh, root cellar uh, for keeping things cool, if, God forbid, there was ever uh, some kind of a nuclear exchange situation or uh, there was fallout coming and we needed a place uh, that would be essentially a fallout shelter, this doubles as that. It uh, serves all the Oh, I'm going to step out of here because that dehumidifier that I mentioned just kicked on. It probably... Uh, felt some of the humidity that, uh, that came in through the door. So I'm going to close this up, let it, let it be in there. Uh, but I'll continue uh, what I was talking about, was that uh, it's a great uh, sort of dual-use structure, because if you ever had a situation when you needed to, you know, use a fallout shelter, I mean, you never want that to happen. You hope that that never happens. But if it ever did happen, you'd really wish that you had something like that. It's a great asset to have, because uh, it's really dual use in that in that way. To make a root cellar and to make a fallout shelter are pretty much identical. There's like very slight modifications to a regular root cellar that make it appropriate to be a fallout shelter also. And none of those modifications cost any money or made it any less useful as a root cellar. So we kind of got two things out of it. And what's great about that is that if there was ever some kind of an event where I wanted a fallout shelter, now I've got one. But if that never happens, and hopefully that never does happen, I didn't just dump my money into a nothing, you know, waste of, you know, effort and expenditure because I've got a really cool root cellar that allows me 
uh, a when uh, you know I get crops out of the garden you know you just you don't have enough room in your refrigerator for a bunch of pumpkins you need a place to put them so that's a great place that I can put pumpkins and squash and you know extra uh, onions and potatoes you know the things you put in a root cellar it's a great asset because I can put all those things in there also when I go to the grocery store and there's things that are in the refrigerator section that are on sale and I want to buy a lot of it I was really able to uh, capitalize on that last winter now I mentioned in the winter time the root cellar keeps a really nice refrigerator temperature just a little above 40 degrees in the summer not so much it's more like 60 degrees so I can't do that in the summer but in the winter time when I go to the grocery store if there's stuff that's in the freezer uh, not freezer but refrigerator section that's on sale I can buy a ton of it knowing that I've got plenty of space and I don't have to worry whether or not it'll fit in my fridge so I'm saving money when I go to the grocery store because I can really take advantage of sales and that's what you should be looking for when you are designing your preps you should think about things that have multiple uses especially the types of things that have uses during regular times because then you don't have to worry or almost subconsciously wish that something bad would happen so that you'll feel like oh well you know I, I wasted all my money on all these preps unless we have a nuclear holocaust and then you feel like you're wishing it on almost your whole life I can't imagine anyone being demented enough to do that but you know what I'm talking about you don't want to be uh, you know putting all this effort and expenditures into things uh, that only give you one use if you have the option to try to uh, create a uh, a situation where you can use your assets whether or not something bad ever happens. So as you were thinking about preps, as you were thinking about uh, potential disasters or emergencies that could befall you or your family, think about the types of things that have a broad use. You're always going to want food. You're always going to want access to the ability to cook food. Think about the things that you are always going to want and focus on those kinds of things because then you don't have to worry about whether it's this disaster or it's that disaster or oh my goodness we voted for the wrong politician and now it's the end of the world. Because you've covered up so many, you've covered so many bases with uh, the preps that you have, uh, you know, created for yourself. It doesn't really matter whether it's this or whether it's that, because you feel like you kind of have it covered either way. So that's it. Again, thank you guys that helped out with the kids' channel. We could still use a little bit more help. We just need a, a couple more hundred watch hours, and we need, uh, you know, a, a few more hundred subs to make it work. So again, down in the description below, I've got a link over to that channel. If you can definitely sub and if you could you know just play in the background while you're you know working on your computer I've got a little playlist it just kind of plays these kid videos turn down the resolution so you're not using your your data rate turn it down to like 144 uh, you know uh, resolution and uh, you know turn down the audio and just let it play in the background It'd make a huge difference to uh, uh, difference to us over here and would allow me to spend a lot more time you know not working on my regular job which is like video and graphic design and that kind of thing uh, I can put a lot more time here into the prepping channel and boy is this an important time to be sharing as much as we can with each other because I think that there's rough waters ahead and it's good for us all to get ready for it and to share what we've learned with each other so we can help the community get more ready for it as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.